Welcome to lecture 6 of this is going to be the concluding lecture where we talk about how to explore computer architecture. Over the last few months we were studying about multi core computer architecture right from the fundamentals of instruction execution all the way to processor design, memory hierarchy, interconnect system and about tiled chip multi core processors. With all this background now if you look forward how can you explore computer architecture further? In this particular lecture, I am giving you some insights about what is the way in which computer architects should approach future problems and demands. In this era of ever changing data and applications pattern, there exists some form of a customization and fine tuning at the architecture level also. This video summarizes about what are the changing trends in the data access pattern and what are the kind of requirements that is expected out of a computer architecture system in order to handle this data well. So, let us go into how to explore computer architecture. So, computing is bottlenecked by the data that is the challenge that you are going to face in the near future. Important workloads in artificial intelligence in machine learning, in genomics all are data intensive and majority of the application require rapid and efficient processing of large data and we know that these processing happen in the hardware. So, data is increasing and we are actually generating more data than we can process. We are in an era where the future applications, the future workloads that are going to run on our computers are going to be massively data intensive. We are going to handle with databases inside memory. Sometimes we may have to handle with graph and tree processing applications. We may have to do analytics on memory and then we may have to deal with data center workloads. So, once you move into data centric approach, performance and energy is a bottleneck as far as processor design is being concerned. Even the web browser that we are using that is going to handle huge amount of data and essentially when you break down it in architecture concept, they are even a web browsing itself is an execution of a program which involves fetching, decoding, execution of instructions. Similarly, the tensor flow is the machine learning framework that Google use and then we have the Google's video codec, video capturing mechanisms, all these are going to handle with huge amount of data. And we know that as far as machine design is being concerned, we need to have three important pillars that we have covered in this course. We started with computation capability of the machine in terms of pipeline, in terms of scheduling. These are the concepts that we learned. And then we learned about storage and memory capacity in terms of cache. Then we have DRAM and then we have disk and then we are talking about the communication capability as well in terms of NOC and TCMPs. So, our entire 8 week course on advanced computer architecture was giving you a flavor of how should be the computation capability and how should be the storage and memory capability and how should be the communication capability. So, overall we use the design approach. So, these three aspects how the computation unit is been designed, how the memory is been organized, what are the capabilities of communication system are going to greatly impact the robustness, the energy consumption, performance and cost associated with execution of applications. So, in total our computer system consists of computing, communication and memory concepts and memory further subdivided into memory which consists of RAM and cache and the permanent storage. So, these are the traditional TCMPs that we have seen in this week. It has some inherent so limitations when you talk about this data intensive applications. So, most of the system that we have seen in this course is dedicated to storing and moving data. You keep data in hard disk and then you move to memory controllers and then from there you move to L2 caches and then you move to the cores. So, it is all about your processor is going to be there in one place, the task is executed in the processor as and when required instruction and data are being moved 
and when this data is going to be huge, then it involves lot of movement of data from off chip to on chip and from different components in on chip. These kind of architectures were working really well as far as the kind of application that we have seen up to the last decade. In this decade, since the data is a dominating factor, we should think about alternate designs that can process this data fast. So the limitations of processor centric design is lot of movement has been involved from hard disk to DRAM, from DRAM to the chip and then from L2 to L1 and many other operations that we have seen. Your miss penalty is there. So when you have lot of data, I cannot keep everything in cache, so caches will encounter cache misses and then we try to come up with optimization design. So most of the system is dedicated to storing and moving data to facilitate processing. So what computer architecture of the future is heading on to is, can you handle data well? For that, ensure data does not overwhelm the components. How can it be done? We can use intelligent algorithms, we can use intelligent architectures, or we can use the whole system design by clubbing intelligent architecture and algorithm devices and take advantage of vast amount of data and the metadata on it, this will help us to improve architectural and system level decisions. And we need to understand and exploit properties of different data as well. And this will help us to improve algorithms and architecture in various matrices. So, with the concepts that we have learned in this course like advanced computer architecture, we have to understand the context in which our processors are going to work. Essentially, our processors are being used for execution of tasks and when tasks are becoming more data centric in modern day, optimizations at the architectural levels are required to facilitate this. So the future is all about data centric computer architectures where you process the data where it resides. And how it has been possible, there is something called in-memory -mem computing or near-memory computing, processing in and near the memory system. So traditionally, we have a processor and then we have memory systems and through the bus, we are going to bring it. Can I add a small processing module near the memory such that some of the operations rather than moving the data, can I process it and then store it back? That is called processing in and near the memory system. And then we should focus on low latency and low energy data access. Can we have mechanisms by which I could store data in places where the latency is low? And can you have or can we have techniques by which the energy associated with reading and writing from memories are going to be less? In this context, non-volatile memories, NVMs are also gaining significance. And then can you design high capacity memory at low cost, low cost data storage and processing, something like hybrid memory. And let us say that say I have n bit of data. Now can I represent this n bit of data into lower than n bits? Can I compress my data such that the data won't take enough space, but still I can get back the data as and when required. So we need higher storage. If you cannot go for higher storage, can you compact the data? So compression friendly architectures, hybrid memory architectures, low latency memory architectures and low memory, low energy memory architectures are going to be some of the important areas in which architecture community is going to work on. Then at the end we should have intelligent data management. It is done with the help of intelligent controllers. We have seen that DRAM controllers, we have this seen hard disk controllers. So can these controllers be put more intelligent such that it can manage the data well by handling robustness and security of hardware is yet another important aspect. Can I take care of the security? Can I take care of trojans that has been coming? Keeping in mind the cost and the scaling aspect. So what is the way forward? We need to design data centric system and intelligence spread around it. Do not center everything around traditional computation units. We have to rethink our computational process from a different angle. We need to have better cooperation across layers of a system. That is something called core design 
rather than designing different components and putting it together, let us try to understand how one component is trying to interact with other. Can we have processors which will talk more frequently with caches and try to know what cache want? So that is called careful core design of components and layers at system level, at architectural level and at the device level. We need to come up with better, richer and more expressive and flexible interfaces. We know that there are different interfaces that we have between processor and memory. Can the interface be more expressive? Can the interface be more flexible? Can interface be more richer and better as far as efficiency is concerned, as far as cooperation is concerned? And better than worst case design. We always design things for worst case. This is the worst traffic that you are going to get. So we design it for handling such kind of worst case traffic. We should know that this kind of worst case happens rarely. So try to focus our designs on common case. And then, so heterogeneity in the design. Rather than keeping everything homogeneous, we should think about design, which is a core design of various components like we discussed. At the same time, some components are used for certain category of applications, whereas some other components in the same chip will take a dominant role when it is handling some other class of application. So can we have specialized hardware? Let the hardware be asymmetric. It enables more efficient design. So no one size is going to fit all. So in this way, the future architectures should be more intelligent in nature. Now, some of you may be thinking, after learning a course like advanced computer architecture over these last eight weeks, what is the way forward? Some of you might have found some interest in studying these topics further. Some of you may be planning to do higher studies in this domain. There are a lot of opportunities that is available for you, that are waiting for you. If it is in terms of higher studies, premier institutes in the country, we have vibrant architecture research group. And there are a lot of R&D sector also in this domain. A lot of corporate sectors also work in hardware manufacturing. So efficient skill set is being needed. The concept that we have learned in this course will help you in building a base which will be acting as a gateway entry point either to higher studies or to a scientific or an engineering career in this domain. To know further what is happening, with a base that you got from this course, reading research materials will help. There are research articles that are published. So I will give you a quick overview of where can you find these research articles. Generally, in computer architecture domain, we have peer-reviewed journals that are published regularly by professional societies. And then we have peer-reviewed conferences as well, which are conducted on an annual basis across different locations of the globe. And these conference proceedings are also available for learners. If you wanted to explore computer architecture further, refer to IEEE or ACM, they are professional societies and we call them transactions, special category of journals and we have journals from other societies as well. So IEEE transactions on computer aided design, IEEE transactions on VLSI, IEEE transactions on computers, ACM transactions on design automation of electronic systems, ACM transactions on embedded computing system. ACM transactions on architecture and code optimizations. These are some of the top tier journals where you get access to research articles published in architecture domain. And then we have Journal of Parallel and Distributed Computing, Journal of Supercomputing, Journal of Systems Architecture, Computer Architecture Letters, Embedded System Letters. Here also you find very good research articles. And then we have premier conferences. International Symposium on Computer Architecture, High Performance Computer Architecture, Micro Architecture, Architectural Support for Programming Languages and, and OS, Parallel Architecture and Compilation Techniques, Design Automation and Test in Europe Conference, Design Automation Conference, the International Conference on Computer Aided Design. These are all the top conferences where you get extremely high quality research material from this domain. We have the next tier level conference, conference on computer design, 
the International Symposium on VLSI, Asia South Pacific Design Automation Conference, VLSI System on Chip Conference, Great Lakes Symposium on VLSI, Network on Chip Symposium, Network on Chip Architecture Workshop. These are all the next level conference. Here also you get reasonably good research material which throw lights into the future of computer architecture. And for the Indian community, we have these conferences which are located in Indian cities happening annually, high performance computing, VLSI design, VLSI design and test, the International Symposium on Electronic Design. These are all international conferences located in India. So, reading articles from these conference proceedings and if possible, try to attend this conference, it will give you a bigger exposure and you will be able to network with researchers who work in this domain. These conferences are having very good keynotes. There are many student contests, PhD forums. So that will get you a chance to be in connection with the architecture community. Now, apart from reading this material, what is further? You have to familiarize with simulators, especially when you work in architectural systems. Open source architectural simulators will help you a lot in implementing these ideas. So one such tool was introduced to you in this course, Jump 5 Similarly, you have multi to sim Sniper, Tejas, many tools are there, which will give you full system simulation. If you are focusing on one micro architectural feature like cache, like GPUs, like DRAM, then BookSim, DRAM SIM, USIM, GPGPU SIM all will help. And these are all power tools, Cacti and Orion. So if at all you wanted to know more about things that has been happening, I request you to go and read these research materials and then implement some of them with in these architectural tools. So and then try to see are you able to get the same kind of results what has been claimed in these papers. So once you implement things in these simulators, then you will get to know more statistics. And you may find some interesting observations. And that is a basis for doing computer architecture research and projects with a research background in computer architecture domain. And people from the electrical science background, especially from electronics and electrical engineering, hardware description language, which you might have learned along with your courses like Verilog, VHDL and BlueSpec, if you have proficiency in that or if you can learn them, you can actually model, you can write hardware codes, hardware description language codes for the techniques, proposed architectures or algorithms that are proposed in these papers and try to implement them using the hardware description language. So model the architecture in the simulators and implement them using HDLs and verify the submodules in FPGA kits or SOC kits and then you will be able to explore further. Tools like Synopsys, Cadence, then HSpice will give you more of the critical path, the timing, the delay, the area overhead analysis, etc. So the summary is multi-core processors and on-chip clouds are going to become an integral part of future digital technologies. Understanding the hardware of such system will help you to design with conceptual clarity. Our country need good computer architects and processor design engineers with hands-on exposure to VLSI design flow to cater the growing demand of skilled personnel in this domain. So being educated citizens who are in the path of learning more, let us make ourselves up to date in our respective subjects with the latest technology enabled learning and practice healthy, sound learning and research practices, academic teamwork to mutually inspire each one of us such that we get transformed as potential technocrats, engineers, scientists, teachers and researchers of next generation. So to conclude, your time in educational institutes is a unique experience. You should enjoy it. It is not the destination that the degree that you get is not that important, but the journey that is important. The way in which you learned, the concept that you learned is more important. And good luck to all of you and may you make your parents, teachers and college proud by the quality of the work that you produce. So we have come to the end of this course and a lot of inputs are being given in this final video lecture which will help you in exploring further in this domain. 
think of pursuing higher studies in the systems field, in the architecture field and the entire national system, the higher education institute like IITs, NITs, IIITs and central CFTIs are all willing to take aspiring candidates to explore computer architecture. It was a pleasure working with you all in this course. I wish you good luck. Thank you.